morning, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to our service this morning and this beautiful December day. Can't beat it, really, unless you want some. But I like it. I hope it stays like this all day. But uh, yeah, once again, here we are, and uh, the quarters go by pretty fast. My turn again. But uh, and, and then I got trying to think of something to do. Couldn't really come up with anything. And a lot of things stirring, a lot of things going on in my life right now. And, and a friend of mine sends me this little link, and a song played, and said, listen to it. And I, I listened to it, and I said, hmm. I texted Ed, and I said, can we talk about Sunday service? And sure enough, so it seems I live, I live a couple miles from him. It was like moments he was there. And... Uh, so that's what I'm going to do a little different this morning. Um, we're going to have a little video, but uh, the song was, was live and, and the leading up to it was live and it was kind of distracting, you know, so Ed says probably I ought to try to lead up to it, so good luck following me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this, this guy was basically the same thing. He had to write a song for, and the deadline was coming up and he couldn't come up with anything. And, and he was walking his dog and in the rain. He didn't want to be walking his dog in the rain. He had other things to do. He had to be working at this, working at that. And, uh, and as his dog was doing his job on the neighbor's lawn, he uh, looked down at his dog and realized that, wow, that's the happiest moment of the dog's life. And he's all stressed out and worried. And at that moment, he realized that there's more to life than worried and wondering about things that are happened or gonna happen and we can't change nothing and animals have a whole different outlook on everything they don't care if it's raining you know uh, and sometimes we we get caught up in the moment and things that we can't change and then this song is uh, is about um these few hours these few hours these uh these little wonders that we can't change um, that we carry with us for our lifetime um and these little hours like my church right here, I mean, if I wasn't carried in this church as a baby, I probably wouldn't be up here right now. And that's what we, we see that, and I couldn't be happier for anyone that brings their kids to church, even, even if you do get loud or whatever, you know? It's not as bad as it was when, when I was younger, <laughs> some of the things we done. But uh, um, it's, it's, it's something that they'll carry with them for the rest of their life. And who knows, you might even be bringing a pastor with you at a young age. And so I'm going to open up with this, uh, with this song and Little Wonders by Rob Thomas. I don't know, do you have a brother, Rob? I do. You do? Well, we got the same one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for those listening online, I guess uh, there's a, 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 the recording will pause during the song for a link to be probably it's something you got to do, I guess. Um, but uh, just pay a little attention to this and uh, just let it go. Well, I'd asked Ed if they thought maybe that was a little too much for a Sunday morning service, but things are changing a little bit here over the years, and we're lightening up a little bit, and, and uh, yeah, I, I just thought that uh, it kind of hit the point, because we, especially this time of year, we, we let ourselves get all wrapped up into something that we can't even control or, or do or, or whatever. It's uh, Sometimes we just got to let it go and put it in God's hands, and... The results sometimes are, most of the time, all the time, is pretty amazing. So uh, let's just take a moment of prayer. Father, here, here we are in these small hours and re installing something in us that we're going to carry with us for a lifetime and always remember. And you will be with us and continue to work with us and be in our hearts and in our minds. And as we go through this service, just open us up and let it all flow in. in. your holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, now we're going to have some announcements. Um, Sing first. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we got um, uh, Shirley Berry. There you go.
Okay, you're going to hear something from me that you're going to be very surprised at, and that is we're going to sing our 189, Unto Us a Child is Born, but I would like us to slow it down and sing it majestically. And it is a shock. <laughs> so I would like us to slow it down and sing it very majestically. To us a child is born, okay? Would you stand please and join with me and sing verse one of 289. <coughs> to play this through once just for us to listen to because it's not one we sing real frequently but I'm sure you'll recognize the tune so my stroke take it away <laughs> Oh, 
we're going to uh, come to the time of uh, Advent reading and candle lighting by Caroline Brickler and Madeline and Joanna, Joanna Plank. The reading is taken from our Advent devotional book, The Gifts of Christmas. Psalms 5, 11, and 12 reads, But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Three hikers were lost in a snowstorm. With the light fading from the sky, they could not see the trail ahead or the way they'd just come. The excitement of adventure was gone, and the fear of the unknown crept in. And then a dim light shone ahead in the distance. Imagine their joy upon seeing that the light came from a small cabin, a place of shelter and protection from the cold. As we walk through life, God is our refuge and protection. His presence allows us to sing for joy. And we can share that joy with others by being a source of God's protection for them as well. It may be a meal, a blanket, a conversation, or a car ride. It could be a gift, a note, or even a literal place to stay out of the cold. Look for those lost in the storm of life who need a safe place for this season. Sharing God's joy with them serves double duty as your joy will likely be increased as well in the process. How can you help provide a place of refuge and protection for others this season? What will that look like in your school, your neighborhood, your work, your church, or your life? Ask God to help you share his joy with the world around you this season. Madeline and Joanna will now light the hope, love, and joy candles and place the gift of joy on through the Christmas tree. Next Sunday, there's no Sunday school, and coffee time is going to be a little bit earlier, maybe 9.45. And also, there will be a Christmas Eve service next Sunday at 7 p.m. Um, there's other announcements in the bulletin, but I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, because you're a better reader than I am. But uh, there's a lot in there, and, 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 and to, uh, some things to share for the week, and being that it's our, it was our third week, third week of Advent, yeah, yeah, um, and then now we get some, some uh, praise and prayer request. Uh, the ones we have written down here are Jasmine Martin, uh, she had knee surgery on Wednesday, and um, hopefully she's recovering good on that. And we got Doug and Ann Wolf. Uh, as Doug remains in a patient at, at the Upstate Medical Center in Syracuse, and we also got Jim and Karen Hall, as Jim will be having surgery tomorrow in Albany, Albany Medical. And you got those that are on, on the bulletin, and, and, uh, and I'm sure there's there's lots of others that, that were mentioned or, or that we can think about. Um, my, as even myself, I got I got a couple of praises now that I can be up there, <coughs> so I like to share it myself. But anyway, um, if you all know, there here a while back, I had uh, another surgery on my eye to relieve some pressure. It was up to 37. She was pretty high, and they done a laser surgery and they got it down to 21, which was 
amazing. And since then, I've had a couple appointments, and each time they take one stitch out. So it's uh, it's starting to come better. Right? I mean, one stitch don't sound like much every six weeks, and it's so small you can't even see it. But you know, it's like Charlie was saying here a few weeks ago about fixing fence when there's miles of fence and wire down, one staple at a time. And uh, it's been two years that I haven't been able to have since this last cardi transplant, very little vision, and now I'm on the chart. I can read that great big E. It's <laughs> six feet away from me. <laughs> um, but I couldn't read it before, so little steps, baby steps, you know. One stitch at a time, I'm good with that. And uh, eventually it's gonna happen, uh, just keep your face strong. So uh, let's just take a moment of prayer. Father, here we are, um, bringing the, the request and the, the praises to you as, as you do your, your amazing work in us. And there's many that have something on their mind or in their hearts that wasn't mentioned and those that we did mention. We just ask that you touch each and every one and be with them in their coming days and comfort them and let them feel your amazing love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Children's Church. Children's Church. Paul is not here today, but I guess uh, somebody else, somebody, Andrea, is going to be doing it. And then uh, <coughs> we're going to come to a time of offering. Good morning and welcome. And we've had a little bit of shifting and adjusting this morning, and that's it's always good when people are willing just to step up. I had had a, um, I looked around and thought, where's Paula? So I ran out quick, checked my phone, and there's a message from her that she wasn't feeling well, and Lauren wasn't feeling well. So that's why I ran back, and Andrea said she would do it. And we checked, there's supplies downstairs, so the kids are having children's church. And this morning, I also wondered, well, what about Carrie? There's supposed to be special music. Well, Carrie sent me a text and she was ill and wasn't able to be here this morning. And thankfully, the song worked out that we were able to have special music in a different way. So things just work out. And that's the beauty of being a church family. We just learn to do things together. But another week of our Advent season has gone by very quickly. And here we are already entering this, the week leading into Christmas, which is always exciting. And I hope all of you are enjoying this experience this year. And I hope that you're all able to find new ways to, to take in the hope and love and joy and peace that we talk about. Our overall theme, for those of you that may not have been part of it from the beginning, has been receiving and giving the gifts, the true gifts of Christmas. And we've talked about hope and love, and today we talk about joy. You know, during the year, we oftentimes save up money to purchase gifts. And we listen carefully for little clues from people as far as what they might want. And then we might write it down so we remember at Christmas time to go buy something for them. And we think about the kinds of things that might make somebody smile and all those kinds of things. But receiving and giving the true gifts of Christmas 
really has nothing to do about the dollar amounts or the credit card bills or how good the cookies are going to be and all those kind of things. It really has nothing to do that with those kind of gifts. It's really the spiritual kind of piece of Christmas that we are to be receiving and giving and sharing. I'd like to read an account of a person that experienced joy in a special way. And the title of this little devotion was called Warm Hearts and Open Arms. Let me read this. The night air in Caracas, Venezuela was warm and thick. The jam street smelled of panaderies, which are local bakeries. There were street tacos being cooked and the fumes of the cars driving by. My friend and I arrived at the apartment building where we'd been, been invited for dinner and a gregarious man with a smile as white as a sunrise opened the door and embraced us. We sat with his family at a long wooden table holding massive platters of beef and rice and plantain. My friend knew Spanish, but I could only listen as the others swapped stories and laughed. Occasionally my friend paused to offer a summary or to translate a question they had asked. Although for hours I understood almost nothing, I never felt like an outsider. Just the opposite, the <laughs> loving welcome enveloped me. I was in a city I'd never visited before, meeting people of completely different history and ethnicity with whom I couldn't even verbally communicate a word. And yet, because they offered me warm hearts and open arms, I felt like I had belonged. Well, as I read that devotion, I had to think about the experience that this individual had as they were invited into this home and they didn't understand the culture, didn't understand the language, but yet they experienced this feeling of belonging, this feeling of warmth, and no doubt they had received a joy because they had been given joy. And as I read that, I thought that goes right along with this idea of receiving joy and giving joy in the coming week, and goes right along with the message today. So what is joy? That's a good question. What is joy? And for each of you, you might be thinking of something a bit different. And we all experience joy in different ways, in new ways. But is it more than the expression of happiness? Is it more than the emotional gladness? You know, happiness and gladness and all those kind of words like laughter and smiles, those are certainly visible ways that we can see somebody being joyful. That certainly are ways for us to see that that person seems pretty joy-filled. They're smiling, they're laughing, they're seemingly just happy about life and we think of people like that and we think they, they have something special about them. But the joy that we're talking about this morning goes beyond the happiness, goes beyond the gladness, and it's really talking about and referring to a joy that's a bonus kind of joy. It's the kind of joy that we can talk about and experience, and it's really the joy that was announced by the shepherds. And so this morning I'd like to read what the shepherds announced. We need to have a little... Christmas flavoring in our message this morning. So we'll go to Luke chapter 2, where we get most of our Christmas story from the Bible. Luke chapter 2, when the shepherds were out there keeping watch over their flocks and taking care of the sheep and listening to all the sounds that the lambs and the sheep were making and doing what shepherds do on a cold, dark night. And then this happens. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. We hear those words usually at least once a year, this time of year. We hear them because it's just one of those feel-good parts of the Christmas story. And I would really like to really focus in on just a few of the words that the angel said to the shepherds. We bring you good news of great joy. Good news, a great joy. And it was a bigger announcement than it had ever been given before. And they were giving the announcement of the arrival of something, somebody that they had anticipated and longed for, expected for hundreds and hundreds of years. And as we've said so many times, 
The people had no idea what this Messiah was going to be like. They had no idea what this leader was going to be like. And this announcement came, and it wasn't just that the baby had been born. It wasn't just the fact that there was a new leader, because as we know, leaders oftentimes let people down. But this was about a savior. This was the announcement about a savior coming to them. It was the announcement that nobody had ever experienced before. And the angels began by saying, we're bringing good news of great joy. Now, I had to think about the, about the shepherds a little bit. And I had to think about the pure joy that they must have experienced inside themselves. And they must have been feeling something pretty special because it says that they ran. They were so excited that they ran out. I guess they left their sheep. I don't know if they left anybody behind, but they left where they were and they ran to find this Savior. They were filled with something new that they had never experienced before. They heard about the announcement. They wanted to go find what this was all about. So as I thought about these shepherds, they carried this newfound joy. And I have to believe that they carried it wherever they went and for the rest of their lives. But I've also had to wonder, what did they feel when they left Mary and Joseph and Jesus? What did they feel? They were in the presence of a joy that, that nobody had ever had before. And I have to believe when they left that setting, that quaint little setting by the manger, that they were walking out with a newfound joy that they wanted others to experience. And I have to believe that they were singing and shouting as they went. Now, as you know, songs oftentimes stick with us. And we remember songs. I have to believe that these shepherds were singing a song. And I'm gonna, in a minute, share the song I believe they could have been singing. But I wanna emphasize this point that we remember songs and songs bring smile to us. So here's a little group participation. I know Shirley's not here to lead it, so I'll do my best. I'm gonna start a song and I want you to join in. I think you'll know the song. All right, here we go. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bottles ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a sled horse open sleigh. All right. Probably never sang that in church before, did you? I don't know. But I saw a lot of smiles. And likely as we sang that song, you might have even remembered singing it as a child or other times and other settings where people were just joyful and singing and experiencing something that was fun. And that song itself was a way, and over the century, I should say centuries, over the decades has been one of those songs that just brings a light feeling to people. And we can go anywhere and sing that song, and it's going to bring a smile to people's face. So I believe that the shepherds went away from the manger setting, probably didn't sing Jingle Bells, but I do think that they possibly sang a song. So I'd like you to go to Psalm 98. Psalm 98. I don't know, we don't know, it doesn't say that this happened, but I have to think that this might possibly have been a song that they would have been singing. These words here. And you have to remember, there was no New Testament when the shepherds were there. Nothing had been written because nothing had happened. This was the first time anybody even experienced this this Christmas setting. But they did have the Psalms. They did have the Old Testament writings. This Psalm, Psalm 98, would have been a familiar Psalm, a song that would have been sung over the years. And I think that it could have been one of those messages that the shepherds went out telling others about. So let me read. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed the righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of the singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. 
Shout for joy before the Lord, the king. And I have to believe they might have finished out. The king's here. He's arrived. We saw him. Now you can sing Jacob's. <laughs> but I have to believe that the shepherds would have been so filled with joy that they might have gone out singing this familiar hymn. We have all kinds of Christmas carols we sing now. Possibly Psalm 98 could have been the first Christmas carol. Here's another little fact that you may not have known, that one of the Christmas carols that we sing and we'll sing later this morning was based on this song. 300 years ago, a man by the name of Isaac Watts penned some lyrics to a song that would get notes and music to later in the years to come. And I'd like to read some of that familiar hymn to you now. And I think you might recognize these words. But it was based on Psalm 98. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let, er let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. 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 Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods and rocks and hills and plains re repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. We're going to sing that as our closing song this morning. But again, that song, those words were based on this song, Psalm 98. Isaac Watts had read that psalm, obviously, many times and felt there was a connection. What we don't know, though, and don't oftentimes talk about, that he actually wrote it for the second coming of Jesus, not the first coming. But we attach it to this time of year and it's taken on a special meaning. But have you ever, ever noticed that the more you repeat something, the greater chance the message is going to be heard? Have you ever noticed that? That the more you repeat it, the more chance, the greater chance that what you are saying is going to be heard and going to be remembered. Sadly, and I say this on a side note, sadly, politicians and world leaders also know this. So they repeatedly share message of slander and doubt and half-truths to get people to take on a new message. And if they repeat it long enough, then people believe it. Sadly, there's a little side note. But we as Christians have a chance. We have a chance to do something. Just like the excited shepherds when they ran to see what this was all about. And then ran from there to tell others about what they had seen. We have the chance. And what is that chance? Well, like Isaac Watts wrote, we have the chance to repeat the sound of joy. Over and over again. And not just at Christmas time. Throughout the year, we... All of us, and whoever might be listening online, we have the chance to repeat this in our lives, in our daily experiences, with whoever we come in contact with. We can repeat this sound of joy. Now, here's a question for you. Is there a difference between a joyful person and a joy-filled person? Two different phrases. Is there a difference between a joyful and a joy-filled? If you go to 1 Peter... Chapter 1, let me explain and read what Peter said as a joy-filled kind of person. Verses 8 and 9. It says this, Even though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So when we accept, accept when we believe in the love that Jesus came to give us, we are filled with, it says, with an inexpressible and glorious joy. So when we believe, when we accept, we have a greater chance than I feel to be joyful because we're joy-filled. Again, it's two different things, but I think it goes together. And we must open our hearts. I really believe this. We have to open our hearts and our minds to accept it in order to be joy-filled. Not everybody wants it, but I truly believe that if we are open to it, we are going to have such a greater experience in being able to share and give joy. What does joy do? If we have joy inside of us, if we're joy-filled, I think it really redirects our focus 
on the love that God has for us and that he is good and loving. We can go through our lives, and as Leonard had kind of mentioned, there's things come along in our lives that might kind of feel a little messy at times. Might feel as though it brings about sadness. We don't have to look far, there's tragedy, we know that. But I truly believe that if we are repeating and singing joy, that helps us to redirect our focus on the good and loving God that gives us comfort that gives us hope, that gives us love. Another question, am I, are you, a joy giver? <coughs> am I, are you, a joy giver? It's something to be joy filled, it's something to be joyful, but are you, am I, a joy giver? Do I spend my time thinking about ways to give that joy away, to share that joy with other people? Do I spread Jesus' joy with the people I meet? Do I do that? How do I do that? Do I repeat it over and over again in my life? Do other people see it? Do other people ex experience it when they're around me? We can each ask that question. It's one thing to be joyful, but do others experience it with me? Do I miss out opportunities because my joy is hidden? You know, I think about that that there are a lot of people that need to experience joy in our lives. And we miss out on opportunities possibly because we don't see it or we don't let our joy shine. The other day, two days ago, we had the memorial service funeral for Cliff Streeter. And during that funeral message, I shared about the fact that Cliff, being a musician, spent decades in front of people on a stage playing in his band. He found joy in that. But as I shared in that message, I truly believe he shared and gave out joy to people who came and listened, who sang along and danced along with the songs that they played. Something else I read here a few months ago was that we need to allow the joy that Jesus came to give us to invade our lives. That word invade, I thought was kind of a, a new way of thinking of something. When we think of invade, invasive, we think of something coming in and taking over. Sadly, there's things in our climate now that are invasive species. But here, we are to allow Jesus' joy to invade us, to take over our lives. So it might be whistling joy to the world as you go out of here today and as you go through your, your week. Maybe it's humming Silent Night away in the manger. Or maybe it's even singing jingle bells, for goodness sake. I truly believe even singing Jingle Bells can allow your joy that you are filled with to shine brightly. I really believe that. So my challenge for each of us is to spread the joy with every greeting that we give when we say Merry Christmas. That in our mind we're saying, Merry Christmas, my joy is your joy. Jesus' joy is your joy. When we say Happy New Year, have a great day, think about the joy that is going into that expression. Or simply say, I'm praying joy for you today. Shirley, come and lead joy to the world, please. <clears throat> There's just no other way to sing this song than sing it joyfully. So make sure you look joyful when you're singing. And it's page 318, and I invite you to stand.
you're thinking the same thing. So the closing song will be the first verse of that song again. Next Sunday again, just a couple of brief announcements. There will not be Sunday school, but we invite everyone to come early at 945 for a special coffee time. And then next Sunday evening, 7 o'clock, we will have a Christmas Eve service here. And everyone is welcome for that. We will also share communion together. And at this time, I'm going to ask Linda to come forward for the closing prayer. <coughs> We're really out of the box this morning. <laughs> oh. Father, here we are, all come before you in these small hours. And <coughs> brothers and sisters, as you leave here today, set your hopes high, and I mean high, reach for them beautiful stars, and open your heart with love, and let it flow, and that joy will overflow your soul, and give you a nice warm blanket of peace. Go in peace, my friends. Thank you.